In this video, I want to show you how to visualize your organization charts using custom visuals in Power BI. I'm going to show you the easiest way to implement it and also how to navigate through the paths using the path DAX function and its other variations. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So if you've ever wondered how easy it is to start implementing something like a dynamic, you know, organizational hierarchy charts in your Power BI reports, it's actually easier than you think. So the org charts in the HR world would be visualizing the chain of commands within your organization. So from the CEO at the very top to the different business partners or team leads and so on and so on. And to see it in action, I prepared a very simple Power BI demo right here, which is just having a simple table here, the employees table, and I visualize it here in the table here. So it just lists out all the employees that we have in our fictional company, their names, their positions in the company, as well as the IDs of their managers. So for example, if we look at Janet here, Janet is an EU region manager and their manager ID is one which is James so that means they are the direct reports of James who is the general manager in the company so this table is what we call a flat table um, and if you want to visualize this in a hierarchy chart we can use a custom visual uh, called the hierarchy chart by Acvillain now it's a custom visual that can be downloaded in the marketplace and um, I've imported it here already um, and if you don't have it imported you can go here and get more visuals this will take you to the marketplace now to access the marketplace you will need a power bi account and i've already covered how to create your own account without a work me email if you're having uh, troubles with that so check it out if you haven't yet so from here you just type hierarchy chart and this is the chart that i've imported so you will just click here and get it now and that will import it into your power bi desktop so anyway i've done that already and it will just bring it to you here so from here we'll just need to import it into our report here and we'll populate this so we can visualize the org charts so in the id well we'll put the employee id and then the manager ID will put on the parent. Now on the title and the subtitle, we'll need to put the name and the position if we want to show it. And there you go. So it's the same view that we have at the bottom, except that it's uh, first interactive. And second of all, it gives you an overall view, a better visualization of the organizational charts, not as a flat file. So you'll see here, we saw that Janet obviously is the EU region manager. And as I said, their our direct report of James, who is a general manager. Um, and it gives you like a quick view of uh, Janet's manager and also Janet's direct reports. So as you can see, this view gives a better perspective as to how the organization is made up. Um, it gives you, for example, we were looking at Janet earlier. It gives you a general idea of where Janet sits in the organization, as well as their manager or their direct reports. And what's great about this custom visual is that you have a lot of options to customize it. So things like color schemes or adding details in the tooltips or even interactivity, things like the tooltips or the, um, the way to decrease or increase the hierarchy level if you have a lot of um, people in your organization. So now that you know how easy it is to start implementing something like an org chart to your Power BI reports, let's try to explore this using this path DAX function. So this is the path DAX function that I'm talking about. So here it says it returns a delimited text string with the identifiers of all parents of the current identifier, starting with the oldest and continuing until current. And it asks for two things. It asks for the ID and the parent ID that you want to get. And in the org charts perspective, it gives you your managers and the managers of your managers all the way to the very top. So let's have a look at how that looks like here in our report. So for this demo, we're going to create a new column just to be able to visualize the path on our table. 
So we're gonna write path here. So the ID uh, column name is employee ID. And then the parent ID is the manager ID. If we hit enter and drag it in our table here. So what it does is it looks at the current employee ID and then it looks at um, any of its managers or in its parents. And if it can find it, it will list it, um, separating it with a pipe, which is the straight line in the middle. Um, and if it can't find it, that's when it will stop. So for example, here we can see James is the GM. You can see here from the top, uh, our org chart here, we have James and he is the GM at the very top of our org chart. So the path is just James and that's it. Whereas let's say uh, Janine is a consultant where their manager is Janet, which is three and then Janet's manager is James. From here, now that we've created the path column, now we can use the different variations of path to explore it even further. So let's start with path contains. So in this case, we're gonna go straight to creating a new column. So path contains. Path contains, we'll say here it returns true if the specified item exists within the specified path. So when would we use the path contains in our scenario here? So let's say we're looking at Janet and Janet has a lot of direct reports and their direct reports have a lot of direct reports. And let's say we want to know who works for Janet regardless of how low they are in the chain. So in that case, for us to be able to find that out, we can use the path contains to do that. So we'll type path contains, we'll ask for path. We've created this already. So remember the column that we've created, path, and then the comma, and then the item that we need to look for in this path. So let's say Janet, uh, we want to see if any of the path contains Janet as a manager at some level. So if we hit enter, now we have the column. We'll just drag it in a table here just to visualize. And then you'll see now it just returns a true or false value. It will return true if we have Janet number three in the path, um, and then it will return false if it doesn't. So quite simple, right? So you'll see that obviously we have, uh, let's say John, because John is in a different branch and he doesn't report to Janet, that's why he's returning false. Whereas Pam, for example, is a developer and they report to Janet, and you'll see number three is in that path here. So it's quite easy to tell. Let's do another variation of the path. So I'm going to create a new column here. So we're going to try this one called the path item. So I'm going to type path item here. And here it says it returns the nth item in the delimited list produced by the path function. So what it does is it goes through the path and whatever number you put in the variable for this path item, it will return that value in that position. And um, actually it's probably easier if I just show you how it works. So if we go path item here, uh, we use the same path column that we've just added. And let's say, give me position two, okay? And we'll ignore the type, which is the third variable. We, uh, that's just optional. It doesn't really matter at this point. So if we hit enter here and add it to our column here, so you'll see it returns some path items, three, three, two, two, three, two. But what does it actually mean? So what it does is it looks at the paths um, and it looks at the number of items in the path um, and then it returns the second value in that path. So if you see here, we said, give me the second uh, value in that path. And uh, let's look at an example here. So James has just one path because he's the GM uh, so he has no second path here, it's just one. So that's why it's returning nothing. Whereas Janet, for example, uh, Janet has the second path here, which is three. That's why it's returning three here. And Janine uh, returns three because it's the second item in the path. Same thing with John, it returns the second item because it's two. You get the idea. We can do the reverse of this using the path item reverse, which uh, instead of going left to right, it goes right to left. So let's try to do that. Let's create a new column here. We'll do path item reverse. Path item reverse. We'll use the path column once more. And then let's give me just the 
first value. Okay, so I will remove this one and show you path item reverse. So what it's doing is it's giving us the first item in the path starting from right to left. Um, and at this point, we've just given it the first value, which is the exact uh, same as the employee ID. So you'll see it's the same because that's the beginning of the path, but you'll see as we change this. So let's say, give me the third value from the path. Uh, some of them won't have any because they don't have a third value. If you want to count how many managers there are to the top, you can use something called the path length. And this is kind of what I use to create the org levels uh, or assign org levels to the employees dynamically. So to do that, we'll create a new column here. We'll do path length. I'm type path length. So you'll see here it says it returns the number of items in a particular path string. This function returns one for the path generated for an ID at the two top or root of the hierarchy. So path length and we'll just give it the path. And this column that we created here. So we'll remove this one and just to show you here. So you'll see if we just uh, organize it like this, it will look sort of familiar to the chart that we have up here. So we'll show you the path length of James's one because they are at the very top. Um, they're at the top of the path. And then you'll see here Janet is two um, because they are on the second level and they are just one level away from the general manager and so on and so on. But all in all, all it's doing is just counting the number of paths that you have in the path column that we've created here, um, which is exactly what we need to do in order to do the org levels. And that's really it for this video. I hope it helped you understand how easy it is to start visualizing your org charts in your Power BI reports. And not only that, I hope that you also now know how to use the path DAX function and also the different path variations that is available for you. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.